welcome to the daily current affairs by civic center ias where we try to discuss the important articles from the hindu the indian express and the pib from the upsc csc prelims perspective displayed are the list of articles which we are going to discuss in today's video the first article of the day says that the prime minister shri narendra modi launched various initiatives uh, related to the agriculture and animal husbandry sector worth around 23300 crore in washim of maharashtra today in this context let us look at the several agricultural initiatives firstly pm kisan samman nidhi 18th installment under this it dispersed 20000 crore rupees to around 9.4 crore families so the cumulative release under the pm kisan reaches 3.45 lakh crore secondly the nemo shetkari mahasnam nidhi yojana of the 5th installment which launched 2000 crore rupees installment benefiting around 90 lakh farmers in maharashtra thirdly agriculture infrastructure fund which dedicated over 7500 projects uh, worth 1920 crore know that the projects include custom hiring centers processing units warehouses and cold storage etc then farmer producer organizations which launched 9200 fpos uh, with a combined turnover of 1300 crore to strengthen farmer cooperatives next solar parks under which it dedicated five solar parks uh, with a total capacity of 19 megawatt across maharashtra under the mukhyamantri saur krishi vahini yojana 2.0 lastly genomic technologies for livestock which launched the unified genomic chip uh, for cattle and indigenous sex sorted semen technology aimed at improving livestock breeding the next article says that prime minister narendra modi released 18th installment of the pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi scheme in short called the pm kisan scheme on 5th october 2024 in washim of maharashtra in this context let us talk about the scheme see the pm kisan scheme supplements the financial needs of land holding farmers across india by offering direct financial support to help with the agriculture inputs and it plays a crucial role in improving the livelihoods of small and marginal farmers in the country furthermore the pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi pm kisan is a central sector scheme launched on 24th feb of 2019 to provide financial assistance to land owning farmers across india subject to certain exclusion criteria now let us look at the key features of the scheme firstly a financial assistance of rupees 6000 annually is transferred into three equal installments of 2000 each though that the funds are directly transferred to the aadha seeked bank accounts of the farmers through direct benefit transfer ensuring transparency and eliminating middlemen secondly digital infrastructure under which a farmer centric digital system has been implemented for the transparent registration and verification of the beneficiaries ensuring the benefits reach the targeted families effectively notably certain categories of farmers are excluded from receiving benefits under the pm kisan scheme which are institutional land holders former and current holders of constitutional posts former and current ministers mps mlas mayors and chairpersons of district panchayats serving or retired officers and employees of the state or central government including the psus and autonomous bodies superannuated pensioners are receiving 10000 rupees or more in monthly pension and lastly income tax payers from the previous assessment year the third article of the day says that cbi ed police customs or judges do not arrest people through video calls According to the Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center in short called the IFOC in a public advisory issued in the view of raising concerns of digital arrest crimes in the country in this context let us talk about IFOC in short uh, which is the in short for the Indian Cyber Crime uh, Coordination Center see the Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center is an initiative of the Ministry of Home Affairs of the Government of India to deal with uh, cyber crime in the country in a coordinated and comprehensive manner Notably the IFOC focuses on tackling all the issues uh, related to cyber crime for the citizens which includes uh, improving coordination between various law enforcement agencies and the stakeholders driving change in the country's overall capability to tackle cyber crime and to improve citizen satisfaction levels so the indian cyber crime coordination center scheme was approved on 5th october of 2018 since its rollout it has worked towards enhancing nation's collective capability to tackle cyber crimes and develop uh, effective coordination among the law enforcement agencies significantly the ifoc was dedicated to the nation on 10th january 2020 by the honorable home minister then if we look at the objectives of the ifoc firstly 
to act as a nodal point to curb cyber crime in the country secondly to strengthen the fight against cyber crime committed against women and children thirdly to facilitate easy filing cyber crime related complaints and identifying cyber crime trends and patterns then to act as early warning system for law enforcement agencies for proactive cyber crime prevention and detection next awareness creation among public about preventing cyber crime and lastly assist states or uts in capacity building of police officers public prosecutors and judicial officers in the area of cyber forensic investigation cyber hygiene cyber criminology etc the next article says that under the revised norms that the union cabinet on thursday approved classical language status to marathi bengali assamese pali and pakrit so a gazette notification to this effect was issued on october 4th know that before this india had six classical languages which are tamil telugu malayalam kannada sanskrit and odia in this context let us talk about classical languages so what will the classical tag, uh, language tag mean for these languages see official say that the broader cultural and academic impact of this designation will extend nationally and internationally so the ministry of education takes steps to promote classical languages notably three central universities were established in 2020 for the promotion of sanskrit firstly the central institute of classical tamil was set up in 2008 to facilitate the translation of the ancient tamil texts and offer courses in tamil similarly centers of excellence have also been set up for the study of kannada telugu malayalam and odia so when and how the concept of classical language arises see following the demands from various states the upa one government decided to create a category of indian languages known as classical languages and laid down various criteria for this status so on october 12th of 2004 tamil became the first indian language to receive classical language status due to its high antiquity and rich literary tradition next in the following month the ministry of culture set up a linguistic experts committee under the sahitya academy to examine proposals for classical language status from various states and bodies then on november 25 sanskrit was declared as a classical language subsequently this status was conferred upon telugu kannada malayalam and odia what do you think is the latest criteria for classical languages so on july 25 this year the lec unanimously revised the criteria for classical status the criteria now includes firstly high antiquity of early texts and recorded history over a period of 1500 to 2000 years secondly a body of ancient literature or texts which is considered a heritage by generations of speakers thirdly epigraphic and inscriptional evidence then knowledge texts especially prose texts in addition to poetry and lastly that classical language and literature could be distinct from its current form or could be discontinuous with later forms of its offshoots the next article says that the reserve bank of india's newly constituted monetary policy committee which is scheduled to meet from october 7 to 9 is likely to keep the key policy rate which is repo rate unchanged at 6.5% so this would be the 10th consecutive monetary policy when the repo rate would have been left untouched in this context let us talk about repo rate and then about monetary policy committee see repo rate which is the short form for the repurchasing option rate is the rate at which the commercial banks borrow funds from the reserve bank of india against collateral typically securities like t bills gold and bond papers managed by the rbi it regulates liquidity and controls inflation by influencing the interest rates and money supply in the banking system now moving on to talk about the mpc see under section 45 zb of the rbi amended act of 1934 the central government is empowered to constitute a six member mpc notably the mpc is entrusted with the task of fixing the benchmark policy rate required to contain inflation within the specified target level what about its composition see the mpc will have six members consisting of rbi governor the rbi deputy governor in charge of the monetary policy one official nominated by rbi board and the remaining three members would represent the government of india furthermore the external members hold office for a period of four years know that the quorum for a meeting shall be four members at least one of whom shall be the governor and in his absence the deputy governor who is the member of the mpc so the mpc takes decisions based upon majority vote so in case of a tie the rbi governor will have the second or casting vote hence the decision of the mpc 
would be binding on the RBI. The next article says that after witnessing huge oversubscriptions and listing at good premiums on the exchanges, the investors have made bumper gains in the initial public offerings, in short called the IPO, that hit the market with an average gain of 41.8% from 38 IPOs in the first half of financial year 2025, which ended on September 30. In this context, let us talk about IPO. So what is an IPO? See, an IPO is an initial public offering in which shares of private company are made available to the public for the first time. So an IPO allows a company to raise equity capital from public investors. Furthermore, the transition from a private to a public company can be an important time for private investors to fully realize the gains from their investment as it typically includes a share of premium from current private investors. Meanwhile, it also allows the public investors to participate in the offering. The last article of the day says that foreign investors turned net sellers in October, offloading shares worth 27,142 crore in just the three days of October due to intensifying conflict between Israel and Iran, a sharp rise in the crude oil prices and improved performance of the Chinese markets. In this context, let us talk about FPA. See, FBI refers to the purchase and holding of wide array of foreign financial assets by investors seeking to invest in a country outside their own. Know that the examples of FPAs include stocks, bonds, mutual funds, exchange traded funds, American depository receipts, and global depository receipts. Furthermore, FPA is part of a country's capital account and is shown on its balance of payments. Notably, FBI generally intends to invest money into foreign country stock market to generate a quick return. Remember that in India, FBI is regulated by SEBI, which is the Securities and Exchange Board of India. Furthermore, FBI in India refers to investment groups or foreign institutional investors and qualified foreign investors. Then, what drives FBI flow into a country? See the factors such as economic stability, growth prospects, favorable regulatory environments, and attractive returns draw FBI into a country. But what are the risks associated with FPI? See, the risks include currency fluctuations, political instability, different regulatory environments, and economic volatility in foreign market. Significantly, FPI is often referred to as hot money because of its tendency to flee at the first signs of the trouble in an economy. Notably, FPI is more liquid, volatile, and therefore riskier than FDI. So in this video, we have discussed uh, several articles in total from Hindu, the Indian Express and the PIB. We'll be back again with another video tomorrow. Thank you.